It's a little wet. It just kind of sprinkled the whole time. We pushed it back, practiced an hour, and kind of avoided most of it. But, yeah. Um, good to get that one on the books. Uh, had a really good week of practice today is what we call our Thursday practice. So really hit all four phases of kicking game and, and get eight uh, periods of team. So we really move out in the ball, red area, goal line, backed up, and it's really situational football. So uh, get that one behind us. Um, uh, we got an event for the guys in here tonight uh, that'll kind of keep everybody here in the hotel. It's New Year's Eve for everybody else in America, but not anybody in this hotel. So um, uh, have some things set up for guys, kind of relax tonight. And then tomorrow there'll be a steady crescendo during the course of the day. We'll go back to the stadium and do a Friday walkthrough, uh, do some soft tissue recovery. I'll come back in here tomorrow and have our meetings and go. So excited for everything. Should be healthy. Um, uh, the only guy that uh, uh, was in question was Geske, um, but but other than that, should be good to go. How has this week of practice prepared you for what's to come? Under? You know, um, it, it, there's a little bit of unknowns, right? Mike's usually the play caller, so offensively, uh, uh, you know, it'll be without his influence. But I think obviously it'll be kind of what they are. Um, a very opportunistic offense. They go for a lot of fourth down, really all over the field. So. Uh, offensively, it's always going to be a challenge to, to play defensively against their offense. And then, uh, obviously, Coach Arnett taking over. He, I think he's still going to have his hands all over the defense and it should be pretty much what we've seen on film. You add Antonio to the staff. Yeah. Why, why was he the guy? And, and what, what impact can he have both on the trail and as coach? You know, so obviously I've known Antonio for a long time. Him and Aaron have a, a relationship. Uh, but uh, when I had the first – when I came here, right, and interviewed, he was part of the crew that I brought in to interview. Um, uh, so it was it was uh, uh, pretty pretty quick. I knew once I knew what I was doing. Uh, once Ryan left, I was promoting Aaron. Uh, I, I basically broached it to Aaron at that time. This is what I'm thinking. This is where you're at, and he said absolutely. Uh, so Antonio had actually already interviewed with everybody on the staff already. So that's why I kind of uh, just wanted to let him uh, get through. Obviously at LSU, he had assignments with uh, uh, the bowl game, but because of us being a little short-handed, he's not going to really coach in the game. But he's been at practice. Uh, and he'll be a set of eyes for us in the, in the booth uh, on Saturday or on, on, on game day. What do you think he can bring to that secondary end in recruiting? Well, you know, um, I've always said this, like, and I don't want to take away anything of his play. Like, um, the, the players that, you know, Antonio had a certain level of ability, obviously played in the NFL or had a chance to play, uh, had a skill set. But what I saw as a player was he always just knew his opponent better than anybody else. He was a relentless film guy. I remember every uh, – my office and our setup there was, was – the second office in was the DB coach's office, and they were in there usually watching film, and I'd go by, and Antonio was in there every night for two hours writing meticulous notes, details about his ways practice, but also about his opponent. And then uh, when he got done playing, I know I talked to uh, Coach Christ, and he actually worked under Jimmy Leonard up there. Um, so it was really cool because he worked under Aranda and, and Jimmy, and he got a lot of that film uh, study base. And then uh, actually a coach got a, a head coaching job in Oklahoma, and and brought uh, Antonio and named him a coordinator uh, after being him as a GA. So I like the fact he's got play calling experience and has seen a lot of different football. And then the last two years at LSU, he's been under two different staffs there as well. So he's really bringing in with a, uh, a wide array, but I know fundamentally how good a teacher he is. Antonio and Aaron playing together for Wisconsin. What do you remember their relationship being like when they played together? Well, they're both Florida boys. Um, uh, uh, Aaron's from Mockley, and Antonio is actually from Boca Raton. Um, they actually have Michigan helmets, so that always stands out to me. That's uh, Boca Raton's helmet. But uh, I just remember um, that secondary, uh, you know, so uh, the third DB in that group is a guy by the name of Jay Vali, who's actually a coordinator at uh, Oklahoma uh, right now. So that secondary was very special. Uh, we could do a lot with them. They were very good coaches uh, on the field, and you can see now by what they've chosen as a profession. But uh, just very intelligent players, respectful of one another. Antonio uh, played corner, but I know he relied heavily on his safeties for calls, and and uh, just, just, I know what I saw as a player. I, I really thought he would eventually turn into a really good coach, and that's what's happened. So many guys from Florida, maybe this area, Brad, have you had to have a conversation about don't play the game before the whistle blows, that kind of a deal from an emotional and an energy type of standpoint? You know, I know we've had a lot of kids at practice, you know, families. Um, I know <laughs> Quan and Johnny and uh, a couple other guys are trying to get the corner on all the extra tickets. Uh, like yeah, yeah. Um, so I, 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 I know – when we got this assignment, it'd be cool. And then I know even like Gabe, his dad, his brother was over here the other day. Um, I think it's just neat to come back down here. We got so many guys from Florida, and this will help us get Florida as well, right? We signed obviously four guys from this recruiting class and from down here. So uh, really excited to see this group keep going. Josh, he said he's been back 100. Yeah. But how have you kind of helped him navigate through this season that's been seemingly kind of, kind of up and down 
it has. It's been tough for him. You know, Josh is a good competitor. I know he was right there on the verge of get cleared, and then he got banged up, and then he kind of got back into it, and then got banged up. Um, uh, it's been a very frustrating, but I would say the last, you know, since we got down here, he really looks, really looks good. Well, I, I gave him a lot of credit um, uh, in in last year's season when he was out. He kind of uh, his weight would fluctuate and kind of have some inconsistency, and he's been steady. Eddie has kept his diet, has been really disappointed with his his overall development of his his body away from the game and and um, how he takes it and main, maintains it. So uh, I'm I'm really excited to see him and Reggie both kind of uh, see where they take off on Monday. Johnny, kind of the big picture after this year. How did you kind of see him grow over the last two years after you got your hands on Johnny Newton? Yes. Yeah. Well, Johnny's a, a you know a very physical player. Um, I think that you know everybody kind of says Illinois plays with a certain type of style. I think Johnny kind of is the highlight of it. Johnny plays with extension. Uh, he's a very powerful player. He's got a huge uh, drive force. He's got great leg strength. Got great core body strength. Um, uh, I think this year the big jump in him was early down pressures. He really learned how to get early down pressures. Uh, early down pressures are unique because the O-line has to set at the line of scrimmage so they don't get their full set. So you can take one move and get vertical and have a lot of production. And, and it takes guys a lot of times to figure that out, but Johnny figured it out early and, and often this year. Brett, for you guys as coaches, with how long you've had to prepare for this game, you talk about seeing Mississippi State on film. Is there ever a point where it's too much film, like you stop watching because you feel yeah, like... Yeah, well, actually, Coach Henry and I and Coach Finellis, we watched about, we, we pushed back practice an hour and we watched an hour of film together. So we, I think, you know, uh, my wife wants to go to dinner tonight, but I'm trying to lobby for another couple hours um, just because it seems like things keep just popping up. And uh, we didn't start preparation over the early, to, to, to your point. Like, one of the things I knew from doing this is you can start too early. I remember my first year... Uh, uh, in early years in coaching, I would dive right into it, and then it kind of did get monotonous for the players and coaches. So we deliberately waited until we, we were done with finals before we really jumped into Mississippi State prep. How do you personally, I know you talked about like guys making their NFL decisions and first round picks, you said you up and help them. Yeah. How does NIL change that, and how do you approach and how to help them navigate? Yeah, it's, it, you know, the NIL world has really changed even just since the season started. I, I could have conversations in by week one and two that I couldn't have at the end of the year. Uh, so you really just got to watch your P's and Q's. Thankfully, we have a couple collectives that are working for us. Uh, they've met with our players. I know that uh, they've had discussions. I kind of hear about it after the fact, a second win. But uh, I give Josh a lot of credit and, and, and the people involved to try and get that ball moving in the right direction. And it, it really is, you know, unique. I, I, uh, I look at guys, right, like, um, uh, you know, a, a third-round pick, like the, the spot that, that – that, that uh, uh, Kirby got drafted in last year, his signing bonus like around 850,000, which is a lot of money. But that same pick in the first round is 8.5 million signing bonus, right? So you can start making five, 10, 15 million dollars by staying in school for a year. Like it just, that's the thing that you got to get them to see. And I think the thing that for me as a coach, you know, I said this yesterday in the media, like we have so few kids transfer, right? I think kids like being here. We have great rapport with our kids. We have great relationships. and the, the thing that always kind of shocks me is I could have the greatest relationship with a kid in the world, and then all of a sudden this agent comes out of nowhere, he knows him for two months, and he trusts him like a gospel. And I'm like, wait a minute, man, I've been standing here. You know, and, and then sometimes, you know, you got uh, parents involved or parents that are, are, are not together that are trying to get, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it, there's a lot of kids, a lot of people pulling these kids in different directions. Um, I do wish they'd push the date back a little bit. We kind of put it on pause once we came down here. Uh, but because we have January 4th through 8th, that's a live recruiting period now. We'll be able to do a little bit of this, but I'd rather do it in person, you know. So, uh, you know, we still have some, you know, a couple of big conversations. We've, there's been several guys that have told us that they're coming back and we're going to kind of announce those one by one after the game. I didn't want to have it be the focus before the game. So uh, some of that stuff will start to happen afterwards. If you can kneel on it on Monday, uh, do you know who might dot the I? <laughs> well, I would probably be uh, – I'm, I'm sure that um, – it would be hard for Kendall Smith to not be standing there first. I'm sure he'd want to do it. But, you know, to start the year, Matt Bailey was the first guy that ever did it in the Wyoming game. Uh, he was just a victim of circumstance. He was standing next to me. Uh, but, um, you know, that's actually a conversation we'll have tomorrow in our pregame meals, me meetings with the coaches. Okay. Johnny, Johnny, any handoffs going his way? <laughs> that's why we have closed practices. <laughs> uh, well, he'll be in Florida for sure. He's from Boca, so – you know, we, we actually just actually made the decision, uh, Pat Hamilton and I, in the uh, um, second bye week, really this, this um, 
mid-south Florida, right? That West Palm Space Coast has been really good for us. Um, Ryan had kind of dabbled in the Orlando area, so I think um, um, Antonio, just being from Palm Beach, he'll take Palm Beach up. Uh, um, uh, uh, Gio will still have uh, Broward and Dade, but I think just for the amount of volume of players that we're getting out of Florida, and now Aaron, you know, I, I'm going to have to cut back on his area a little bit, uh, even though he's not going to like it, but I, I do think Antonio will have a large piece of Florida, uh, but he's also been some other places uh, in his coaching resume, so he's kind of an ambidextrous guy. He's a what, South Florida kid, but he probably can go anywhere and recruit pretty well. When you look at resumes on Antonio, you know, being a coordinator and calling his own defense, even at a program like North Central, yeah. maybe it's a question for him, but how do you feel like that helped him? And well, you, you know, it's interesting. Um, I asked him, I, I, I talk to Antonio all the time, so sure. like, you know, one of the Cool things he, when I, you know, called him and told him what I was going to do, he, he said, Coach, thank you for always sticking with me, right? Like I would always, you know, hey, I tried to help him get a job here or there. I knew I was going to hire him as soon as I had an opportunity, but um, I just think this kid's got something special to him. And I said, kid, he's a good young man. He's, he's very gifted. And then when I talked to him about what he learned after his first year as a coordinator, after his second year as a coordinator, you can tell he just really grow. When you're that young, you get put in that role, you realize the amount of, of planning and and, and and critiquing and self-evaluation and, and it's until you become a play caller you never really go through that so um yeah that was intriguing to me and then also just the volume of the you know i remember randa talking about him i remember jimmy talking about him just about his value in the room with especially with the players when i called brian kelly brian was very uh over complimentary about uh the way the players respond to antonio and the way he kind of fits in with them so uh, and then kerry cooks who's the db coach there for brian was my first db coach ever so there's a whole little twisted twisted line there Oh, sorry. Uh, how much do you plan on using this game, this final game of the year, to see what you have for next year? Well, it's a little bit of both. I, I agree. I, I think, um, you know, I've said numerous times to our guys, hey, this is a, uh, as much as it is an end of 2022, it's going to be played in 23, but it's a catalyst into this new season, right? So there's new guys, new faces. Uh, obviously, Tommy, uh, you know, I think to, to know this is the finality of his, of his last game uh, is, is something that I think he's really excited about and the guys are excited around him. Uh, but a guy like... Uh, Isaiah, Josh, um, um, you know, some of the new defensive players are going to get experiences because those other guys out there, you know, um, I think a catapult into what they can do in 23 is really uh, a big part of it. I think that's what we try to build as coaches as well. Some of the younger DBs, like talk about like Matthew or some of the corners, how have they kind of responded to the increased reps over the bowl period? Really good. Um, you know, Matt Bailey, Xavier Scott, um, uh, T. Strain, uh, Prince Green has had a good couple weeks of practice. Really impressed with him. Um, uh, Sid and Chase were at practice today, and I saw I saw Sid, uh, I saw um, Matt Bailey go over and talk with with Sid. And I know as soon as Sid pulled out of those practices, that's when Matt kind of took his play to a different level. It was pretty interesting to watch. Like literally the first day, all of us coaches were watching film the next day, and we're like, "Do you guys see something different with with, with two? You know, and uh, with Bailey?" And 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 I'm like, I'm like, it was just that's how it happens, man. When those kids, you know, when the next one moves on, sometimes. That moment of okay, I'm here. This this comes through, and it's it's definitely happened with a lot of our DBs for sure. Yeah. 